thanks for coming. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Carlato Pascalino, uh, who's at the, uh, some, uh, the Center for Mathematics and Informatics uh, in Amsterdam, National Center for Research there, um, and uh, has been there for several years, uh, working on information retrieval problems, and in particular, uh, he's been working on uh, the context in which he and I met was through the Trek session track, uh, which is concerned with the evaluation of system performance in support of people's information seeking over whole sessions. Um, and uh, that was last year that we met there. And, and then uh, we met again this year at Trek. Uh, where we were both speaking on this in the same track, and uh, we thought this would be a, a good opportunity for uh, Carrado to tell us more about uh, his specific PhD research. So I'll let you do that. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you all to, for being here. I have resisted the temptation to go uh, to the neighbors and, uh, at Princeton. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I didn't mention that. Okay. <laughs> Don't stay there. Yeah. Uh, Noam so. Chomsky is talking there <laughs> right now. Oh, yeah, that's Noam <laughs> Chomsky is talking there. But uh, another um, place where, um, where, Nick, where I, myself and Nick met was uh, because he invited me, was at uh, uh, Sonnen. It's a workshop. Uh, organized by Nick Belden uh, about uh, all, session um, all session evaluation and just to to get the feeling what uh, uh, what the community what is the sta state of art in the community what are the uh, debate going on now I just wrote some notes from the breakout groups there were several breakout groups uh, which more or less are uh, represent the main categories of uh, discussion in uh, in all session evaluation. So uh, the first one, ideal session evaluation. Uh, some I just picked some uh, some sentences from the uh, report, and all session evaluation is about violation of the independence assumption. Uh, which means that queries and, uh, in general, interaction of uh, users with the system are not independent of each other. So, other requirements for all session evaluation are need to handle various types of interactivity uh, and vary users very specific specificity of task description. Another uh, topic was statistical modeling. So uh, people were interested whether formal models of interaction could help uh, formalizing some intuition behind all session evaluation. So and here are more or less what came out of the discussion there. Task identification categorization. So how evaluating our system depends on, uh, on identifying the task that we as uh, researcher and designer aim to support. The fifth group uh, talk about the need of sharing, I have a common protocol to share the results of user studies. So, um, uh, and one important point is that there is no common method of study or measuring users during the session, and no report is standard. So, and the sixth is about the detecting session types. So, notice there was uh, a fourth. Uh, uh, breakout group, which was about simulation, which, uh, <coughs> we teased all the people attending that session because 
and I agree with uh, with most of the people there that once you solve the IR problem, the simulation problem kind comes for free. <laughs> um, which obviously people from the Burkhardt group and simulation were, they didn't agree about it. <laughs> so this is what, what I want to talk about. I want to propose a conceptual framework to think about uh, uh, whole sessions, uh, how evaluate, how sharing, how to share the results of user study based on on, on uh, uh, all sessions and how to uh, design system to support um, to support the accomplishment of tasks that last more that they need more than one interaction with the system to uh, to accomplish to be accomplished I will talk about some logic based models they are not the only existing models but that's what these kind of models are um, the focus of my own research, and I will just to make things more uh, more tangible. Uh, I will uh, talk about uh, an example where these kind of models are applied to uh, to a setting that I think everybody here in this room knows, so uh, it's familiar. I don't know. Uh, I don't think. I need to explain much about the track, uh, session track, so I, we can just uh, go straight to the method. Uh, make the distinction between IR and IA, information access. And I think it's a crucial distinction. And they are different, at least in these four uh, aspects. Uh, they have different focus. Uh, they target different events. They uh, they uh, promote as a discipline they promote a different notion of relevance and they conceptualize, they conceptualize users differently so in IR the focus is on technology uh, whether I believe that on information access the focus is more on cognitive activity and of course in information access um, People use some technology, but not exclusively. And they they use uh, an information retrieval system together with other systems or or um, uh, other kind of uh, information management tools. The targets are different. So uh, what? In information retrieval, we think about the interesting event to model are strictly dependent how, on how we describe our information units. So, if you are talking about uh, text retrieval, the focus will be on some representation of information units in terms of terms. If you think about uh, image retrieval or, or other kind of uh, retrieval. The events are interacting with this different, um, this different uh, uh, units. Information access. We 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 don't have uh, a clear information unit in mind because uh, it depends on what kind of task we are going to support. And except, uh, especially the relevance, uh, which is a crucial, uh, a crucial notion in information retrieval, dramatically change when we focus on information access. The relevance in information retrieval is defined as a relation between a query and a document. And information retrieval system aim to optimize this relation. In information Access, we are more interested in behavioral change. So the goal of supporting information access is to, to, uh, to cause 
uh, a behavioral change in such a way that the task that we aim to support um, is fulfilled. So uh, relevance in one case is a relation, in, in the second one is a potential for behavioral change. Uh, user conceptualization, this kind of uh, ideal user that we uh, as a research have in mind. Uh, in information retrieval, basically, a user is a set of uh, relevance judgments. Um, we aim to optimize on that. Uh, in information access, uh, a user can be described more as a set of cognitive states, and we aim to change uh, these cognitive states in, in such a way that uh, the task uh, the underlying task uh, is more effectively supported. So there are both very ideal um, concepts of users. Both relate to unobservables. We can't observe cognitive states. In, in the same way, we can't observe relevance judgment of the same user that we are going to um, uh, to support because obviously if we know the relevance judgment of that particular user, then uh, we don't have the retrieval problem in the first place. Uh, there are different uh, problems in using information retrieval methods to, uh, to support information access. Uh, that was, this one is an approach that has been, uh, uh, is quite common. Uh, the problem is that the same models of IR, the same methods, usually do, well, do not scale. They are very different. So it's very difficult to, to approach information access using information retrieval uh, concepts and, and methods. By the way, um, if you have questions, uh, just interrupt me. Um, it's, um, I think it's interesting to have, we are a small group, so if we, in the end, we, we have some interaction, <laughs> uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's more important than me giving, uh, giving a talk. So, uh, these are um, the challenge that we face when we try to model information access in the same way uh, we model IR. So what we have to change in IR models or uh, that are uh, to support information access. So uh, the task is clear. Well, at least it was clear in, uh, from what, uh, um, what I heard uh, during the uh, the whole session inform um, the whole session evaluation workshop so we need method to compare different approaches we need protocols to share results and we need methods for applying the solutions to practical system both for design and for evaluation and here I, I stress uh, this point that models are not the solution. So models are a kind of conceptual framework, a kind of playground for different solutions to be compared and to be applied to possibly uh, different problems. And there's few requirements. Well, first, uh, models should be expressive enough for representative observables. So uh, what we can observe should have some counterpart in the form of models. Um, we may have models that, that are more expressive than observation can actually uh, instantiate, but definitely we want models to be, not to be uh, less expressive. Uh, models should account for many agents interactions. So um, the um, the traditional setting of having one agent and uh, one system interacting with each other um, it's a kind of restrictive. So we'd like 
uh, models to to be uh, to allow for many agents. And models uh, should be dynamic. So, um, based on on observation, the model parameter should change. Um, um, models should account for uncertain observations. So at the end, we want uh, models to have some way to discuss probability, because probabilities are uh, the mathematical framework for discussing uncertainty. So uh, models uh, should allow to manipulate probabilities in some way. And um, we should be able to um, to interpret this model in different ways. And here, uh, sometimes it's unclear what the model is. And uh, I take this uh, very uh, general uh, point of view from, I think it's, it's, uh, it's more a logical uh, approach to modeling. There are many other definitions possible. But in general, a model is a structure that we use to interpret sentences. So uh, we need a language, and a language of interaction will have some operators that describe uh, the observables. And the model should assign meaning to these operators in some way. This very general definition, and will be clear in a moment what are the consequences. So, I, as a conceptual framework uh, for modeling, I, I propose this, this view. So there are two ways to, um, to interpret what a user is doing in relation to a tool that we can use to support the task. So, obviously, a very ideal um, situation would be to have direct access to a user cognitive state. Uh, I call it omniscient view because it's ideal, but uh, the cognitive states as such are hidden. And we have a system view, and a system view uh, kind of exchange these cognitive states for observables. So, it can be queries, clicks, uh, mouse, or um, eye movements. And they have, obviously, the, the omniscient view as, uh, is difficult as a conceptual model because uh, our, we are granting a kind of operational status to unobservables. So, it's difficult to find um, we can use it as a conceptual model, but it's very difficult to develop computational models for that. The system view focuses more on the computational side because well, uh, observables we can uh, we can build models for that. So what I propose is a, a kind of third uh, view. Uh, which I call the model theoretic. And uh, model theoretic uh, view combines the omniscient view with the system view and takes the cognitive cues to be evidence for events, but not themselves events in the model. So there is a, the, the basic difference is that events in the system view are just what you observe. Uh, can be uh, physiological cues, whatever. But I, uh, in the, in the model theoretic view, are there are different events. There are probabilistically related to the observable events, but they are not the same. So, kind of the model theoretic view offers an interpretation in terms of cognitive cues of what the cognitive states. Are. So there is some uncertainty, obviously, otherwise you will be in an omniscient view. Uh, but 
the model theoretic view has the advantage of making the background assumption about the relation between cognitive cues and cognitive states uh, clear and explicit, so that a competing view can be compared and uh, in, in a way that we can use this, uh, these models to actually uh, calculate uh, retrieval function or uh, to develop evaluation methods from that. So, uh, the current approach of this kind of uh, modeling is basically based on Markov models. And there is one single aspect of Mark models that makes these models difficult to apply in, in information access. Basically, Markov models is a sequence of uh, application of Bayes rule. And here is a nice example, uh, very simple, and where the Bayes rule doesn't hold. And it's interesting because it's very simple, but it makes um, clear that probabilities are um, or should be computed uh, based on an underlying model of the situation. And obviously, if you think about applications, uh, we can't do that in uh, in single uh, query document uh, setting because, well, we don't have information about uh, the situation except for the query and the document. But in, uh, in information access, this becomes important. So the, the Monte Hall is very simple. Um, I think everyone is familiar with uh, this quiz master uh, game. The quiz master uh, put, well, the situation is that there are two players, and uh, there are three doors with a, a car behind. And from the omniscient view, uh, we know where the car is, but uh, players don't. So uh, a player is asked to choose one door, and I say, well, I can, he can choose door one. Then the quiz master opens uh, one other door. Well, there are two, sub two possibilities. Uh, door two can be open, or door three. So this is a very simple situation. And even in this simple interaction, it makes clear that it's difficult to, uh, to calculate probabilities, even in this case. So the question is, what's the event space where we should calculate uh, probabilities? Well, one naive uh, way to uh, perform this calculation could be say, well, um, there are three cars, and there are three choices, and you, you get uh, uh, nine possible states of, in the model. Uh, but this is not the way people compute uh, probabilities, not even uh, in, uh, uh, in this very simple situation. So, uh, what we need here to compute the probabilities that are relevant to this situation is to have a model of uh, what the players know. So a model of the uh, existing state. And here the basic difference is uh, whether the model uh, formalizes the intuition that uh, someone else than the quiz master put uh, the car behind the door or the piece master itself. So if we, if our model tells us that uh, the quiz master puts uh, a car uh, behind the door, the probability are not nine anymore, there will be event spaces, because uh, if I choose door one and the quiz master puts uh, a car behind one of the doors, uh, it, you always have a, cho a, a choice of open up one of the other two doors. Whether if someone else puts uh, the car in uh, behind the door, 
Well, in some situation, the pitch master will not be able to uh, open an empty door. So it's very, uh, there are two ways to, uh, to calculate the probabilities. And the main message of this example is that the, two, the ways to compute probabilities in this case depend on the model of the situation. Um, so, um, what I'm doing now is I, I try to introduce in a very informal way uh, epistemic models that formalize uh, an intuition like that of the quiz master. Uh, and I try to apply these models on a practical case. So, uh, from the perspective of the system, a user is, or uh, a player, is uncertain between uh, different uh, indistinguishable state. So, um, in the case of the, um, of the preach master and, and the player, uh, the player, uh, I put here, well, I put here uh, this line to indicate when, uh, when we are uncertain or well, between situation uh, from one perspective or from uh, other perspective. So in this case, uh, the car behind one, two, or three is indistinguishable for the perspective of uh, the player, but not from the perspective of the quiz master. Whether uh, opening the door is an action that is um, distinguishable for both the quiz master and the user and, and the player. So in this case, uh, we get uh, a similar situation. So. Um, and the goal of this kind of models is to capture the intuition that in different situations, uh, the way to calculate probabilities uh, are different. So, and um, basically these kind of models, are, they generalize uh, based on uh, conditioning by uh, by having at each step a different way to calculate uh, the conditioning. So um, the event space can change based on the different states. And well, it's a kind of generalized um, conditioning because. Um, we don't calculate probabilities based on uh, um, uh, based on uh, uh, a general model, which is the same for the entire situation. But based on our model of the situation, we um, we change the probability space. So to make things this very um, very general. But I, I, I try now to apply uh, to uh, to tell how to apply in a practical situation, and I think it makes things much more clear. Um, this one what was the, um, our last submission last year for Trike, and what we did was to um, uh, to design a, a very simple weight function for uh, uh, expansion terms, and uh, I think you're all familiar with the, the track uh, uh, setting, but... Maybe, um, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> so, um, um, so the track uh, setting, the goal of, the, of track uh, is to improve uh, regular retrieval um, by providing some set, some information about the session. And there are basically uh, four kinds of uh, of, um, of tasks. Uh, there are single. The, the difference between the tasks is the amount and the kind of uh, additional information that you can use for um, for producing one single 
uh, a rated list. So you have basically um, a sequence of queries, and uh, some of the queries um, Um, so, um, for each query, you get a retrieval uh, list from, uh, uh, from the, the session organizer. Uh, and the goal is to rank, to produce a rank at least uh, with respect to the last query. For the last query, they don't provide any information at all, uh, just a query. So, the question is, uh, uh, can, you, um, can you design a system that use um, the session data in such a way that the uh, list, ranked list, as uh, uh, well, where it improves some measure. And uh, I, um, last, at least last year, there were two measures uh, provided. So um, some query, um, sorry. Um, uh, Okay, there were two, two measures. Um, every session was mapped to uh, some topics. So um, every session, at least the last query, is about a topic. However, there were different topics covered by more than one uh, session. So uh, a session could be, um, could be about, oh, about uh, one or two topics, uh, or um, um, or focus on on one uh, single topic. So, uh, in the last query, subtopic means that a document is judged relevant if and only if it's relevant to the subtopic of the last query. In all subtopic metric. A document is judged relevant if and only if it's relevant to one of the subtopics of the session. And uh, well, we compared our results, and uh, we were able to uh, to produce a decent ranking for the all subtopic, uh, which actually is, is an easier task because. Uh, uh, um, so, because you are trying, you, you don't need to uh, to really map what the user is trying to achieve with the last query, but only uh, one achievement during one of the interaction in the session. And uh, I think it's and most groups uh, um, didn't weren't able to. Um, to improve much on the last query, so um, we were in, uh, we were not the only uh, one having trouble with this task. Uh, but this year we wanted to uh, to improve on that. So and I, my my personal interest was to uh, to try to apply um, the the models uh, I were working about. Uh, and to show whether this model, at least in theory, can um, can be used for design. So uh, this one is uh, a typical strategy, the strategy uh, to model in IR. So um, my question was, as I mentioned earlier, uh, can this strategy be applied, or does this strategy scale to information access? And um, well, the, uh, obviously my, my answer is no. <laughs> um, but uh, I can show why. So um, there are a few things in uh, IR modeling that are uh, quite at odds with our intuition about sessions and about uh, long-lasting interaction with the system. So um, an information retrieval model is based on defining event space, identifying observables that we can actually measure, queries, clicks, uh, or, or other observables. And usually in traditional IR models, they are just 
the query terms, uh, make some independence assumption, and apply a bias rule uh, to produce a, uh, a ranking function. So there are many models of AR, but uh, they, they apply basically the same strategy. Um, there are just these four basic steps. And all the difference between the models are either they change something in these four steps, or they differ on the way they estimate the probabilities in the model. So, uh, but the four steps are all there. Uh, I, I just wrote down for the uh, language model, but relevance models, uh, conceptual space uh, models, which is based on uh, um, on estimating the cost of interactions, they basically work uh, exactly in the same way. So language models is is interesting because that uh, is what we use as an underlying system. So the injury. Uh, uh, so the first step is defining the, uh, an event space, and. In this case, our uh, event space has just Cartesian product of document space, um, term, and information need. And uh, the observable set are sequence of terms, order sequence of terms, and a ranking function is based uh, on application of this uh, measure and on stating that one single independence assumption. And of course, you could think about extending this model um, for session retrieval. So, uh, for instance, one possibility could be uh, calculating the uh, this probability of uh, the compound event given an information need by, for example, counting the term query term in sessions under at least on the assumption that a session is about one single information need, and then applying uh, the last marginalization step on that. Um, so there are some problems in doing, in, in following this procedure. And uh, I put here the, what I think are the uh, most crucial aspects. Hmm? So the first one, uh, it's kind of natural, and um, I don't think uh, there are really any problem about uh, connecting a probabilistic event space with a model assumption. I think that even in, in, in session-based retrieval, uh, the probabilistic event space formalizes what, the, uh, what we think is the context. So um, there are some measures that we can, uh, we, can we, that we can get from the system. So uh, in, in the track uh, uh, case, there are uh, queries, clicks, uh, ranked list, uh, uh, dwell times. Uh, but w we can't build a model that assumes other observables. So observe, actually, uh, we can't have in a model events that we can't instantiate with observations. So uh, the, the first uh, uh, point is, uh, is fair. What, um, when we start to have problems is in defining the space a priori. So um, Bayesian update basically uh, amounts on uh, eliminating some states from the from the probability space. We just uh, zoom in into one space and discard all the others. That's what, that's what uh, if you apply a Markov uh, uh, model on uh, an event, that's what you get. Um, it's very difficult in this setting, in higher models, to relate observation to different spaces. So, um, and it's very difficult to uh, formalize the intuition that if, you ha if I have a distribution on, on, on terms and uh, 
that I want to have a distribution on information need, but the, the space where this distribution range shouldn't be the same. So obviously we know that if information needs are different than terms, but even this, this quite a straightforward intuition is almost impossible to formalize in our model. Uh, at least in, in this kind, in, if we describe IR models in the four uh, step. And I think the last one is the, the most important one, that most models, well, all models, I think, uh, assume that we can sample from the relevant population. So uh, if I have, uh, uh, in, in text retrieval, I observe a query, and uh, a query is thought of as being a sample from the relevant population. Then I what are you thinking? I sample a, a click, and this again a sample from the relevant population. But there is no, there is no structure, so I can't, for instance, say that uh, I sample a query and I sample a retrieval list, and the retrieval list was an answer of the first query using an, another system. So this is what, uh, what the, the, the track session is about, but you can't formalize in, uh, in a retrieval model. <coughs> so uh, in general, what we want to, uh, to investigate in, in this submission was um, how different contexts could be mapped to different choices of probability space. So um, we want to look at this, uh, this picture. First, we wanted to use a standard language model. Um, we didn't want to investigate how to improve on retrieval models. Um, the, the question was how to uh, to design an event model which uh, outputs an event space for a standard language model. So this was the only way to, uh, to investigate the intuition that uh, different contexts are mapped to different event spaces. Oh. <coughs> Can you say something about what you mean by context? Um, well, um, context in, in the case of the track session okay. is uh, the set of, of observables that we are given by the organizers. Okay. So in, in, in this particular uh, case, so um, if we have a set of observables, query clicks or, <coughs> or a tweet list, the way to uh, to include this in a standard IR model, at least this is the hypothesis, is through changing the event space of the retrieval model. So, uh, okay. So, um, and we saw um, there are different uh, um, requirements, but I think the most important is the second one, is that uh, because of interactions, uh, the probability space can grow. So the system can have actually more information, which is, which is uh, again, it's intuitively uh, quite easy to make a point uh, for that, but it's difficult to formalize in the higher model. So that uh, after interaction, the space of the possible events that the system can uh, consider are more or could increase. So um, in the track uh, in the track set setting, this is what uh, 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 how your our mo combined model uh, looks like. So uh, we have a user. And we are provided with uh, um, with queries, uh, result list, and clicks. And what is interesting to notice, because it will be relevant later on, 
is that we don't have any information about the system that has been used uh, to collect the data. So uh, for us, it's kind of black box there. Um, this hidden retrieval system, and we don't have any information on that. And what we want uh, to do is to design an event model and then combine it with a standard IR model. Um, we don't do anything uh, different than standard language model. Um, in order to, to make it uh, feasible uh, by using Indrim, because that uh, was also one of the, um, of the well, it's not a requirement, but we want to use Indri because it makes it easier to compare the results with other groups. So if you, uh, if you start using your own system and you don't give uh, any information about the setting of the system, then you, well, you, you, you have some results, but then it makes it impossible to, uh, to compare with, uh, uh, with other groups. And the nice thing of being a track is exactly that you can compare your results because you're using the same data, or at least uh, you're supposed to use the same data. <laughs> um, so the first uh, uh, is kind of conjecture, in the sense that uh, um, it's difficult to, to prove it formally. But uh, the conjecture is that uh, um, updating the probability space at one step, then uh, calculating the, um, the generalized conditioning and then repeating this procedure till the last step, then reading out the term probabilities in the last step, which are the probability of the relevant um, uh, distribution of the last query, is the same than doing this in, in batches. So, uh, just first reading, reading all the, the data and then apply your, your model. <laughs> so is this a conjecture? I don't know if you have the same experience. Uh, what we can show is that uh, uh, this model is equivalent to query expansion. Um, well, it's, uh, um, there are quite a a long procedure to do that, but it's not difficult. It's just uh, basically the idea is to, to write a relevance model in terms of massive query expansion, and then showing that uh, changing the probability space uh, amounts of uh, selecting a certain amount of terms from uh, the, the entire set. Um, so we use query expansion. And uh, we just take the top five uh, most relevant terms, which is, there is no particular reason except for uh, a computational feasibility. Um, calculating these uh, event models can be, uh, I will show uh, how to do it in practice, but can be quite expensive uh, from the computational point of view. And as a baseline, it's just the prior model, where uh, we model the intuition that a user, before any interaction, is uncertain between some distributions. Uh, and that's that's the prior model. So the first step is uh, constructing this uh, this state, and there are obviously there are many ways to do it, and um, it doesn't change. Uh, much in the model, it's just a problem of estimating uh, of estimating these probabilities. As I already mentioned, the goal of these models is to offer a playground for uh, for different uh, estimation strategies to be compared. So um, this one is really about instantiating the model and as it's not crucial to the model itself. Uh, but in order to, to, to produce some results, the probability in the model have, has, to be, uh, has to be instantiated. So uh, one way to, uh, to uh, calculate the probabilities between which a user is assumed 
to be uncertain uh, is to extract some probabilities from the narrative. Um, and uh, the way we did is to, um, to consider in, um, each sentence of the narrative, which was provided uh, by the track organizer. A narrative is a specification of uh, what the test subject is supposed to, uh, to look for. Um, and if you see, the first the sentence is mostly uh, a, a way to, uh, to explain the test person um, is his or her role in search, so to set, kind of set um, uh, the stage for the search. And we used uh, uh, each sentence as a query. You get uh, uh, in the standard uh, IR model, the standard INDRI, and we get a number of documents. And the number of documents um, were uh, quite few documents because of, uh, again, of because of computational reasons. Uh, we just restricted the number of documents to three, which is a quite uh, strong assumption. So um, you get uh, a term uh, distribution, which is mixed with the background distribution. So the three state there, they are all distribution over the same vocabulary which it, you can think about as the session vocabulary. And the assumption is that before any interaction with the system, our user has <coughs> some idea about the topic, or some idea about where to start the search. And this knowledge is represented with three distributions. And we can look at uh, how different are, the, are these distributions. And um, if you apply the conjecture uh, before, you can sample from these distributions and you can use the, a similarity measure between the distribution as a weight for query expansion. Uh, this um, amounts to say, uh, well, uh, a user is uncertain between three distributions, uh, but some states are considered more probable than other. And, um, and we use a similarity measure between, <coughs> in this case, the Komogoro Smirnov uh, uh, test uh, to, uh, to promote states that are different uh, from the other. So states that there are um, uh, that uh, shed some light on uh, on the, our relevant distribution because the the target is of course to determine at the end of all these interaction steps is to determine which is the uh, distribution the relevant distribution. So um, and there are a lot of uh, uh, of. Uh, reasons to uh, to use uh, a Kolmogorov Smirnov test. Uh, the main reason being that it's very simple, um, and it allows to uh, to look at to investigate the model without uh, um, too much dependency on on the quality of our uh, estimation. So, um, of course, you can use uh, other measures of similarity or uh, m much more complex, but then you lose some insight in the model. Probably the performance will be better, but you lose some insight in, uh, in the model. <coughs> then start the, from the uh, prior probability. Uh, we start designing, uh, we start designing update function. So um, this update function, uh, tell how, uh, how to take into account epistemic actions. So um, action where uh, a user is, um, uh, is trying to find out this uh, relevant distribution. 
So um, we update the distribution by, um, again, uh, it's a quite simple approach, uh, but uh, it makes um, clear what the transition between uh, from the prior probability to the next prior probability and following step are. So in this case, it's again a, a simple uh, term counting. So uh, we updated the probability based on how many times uh, the observed event, the observed, uh, in this case the query, but uh, also the, the, the clicks, appear in the probability. So uh, basically, um, uh, if the probability, the distribution contains uh, more uh, of the query terms, we, uh, we raise the probability of that state to be uh, the relevant distribution. Um, and so again, we can measure the similarity between these distributions. And uh, again, with uh, the, the same test, a very simple uh, uh, common goal spin of test, basically is the distance between the two distributions. And what is interesting that is that uh, uh, we this is the generalized condition. I was talking about. So uh, you see that uh, what is on uh, 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 what is there is a probability space that changes at every interaction. So um, we take into account the distributions, uh, the, um, the the probability of <coughs> events, which is the PAA. Uh, and we, well, we estimated by calculating the difference between the observed events, which is this one. Uh, and, and we take into account the preconditioning. Preconditioning uh, tells how, prob uh, how probable is uh, a certain distribution given uh, a situation that was before, before the update. So, uh, and I think a uh, simple estimator is to look at the difference between the distributions. There are many ways to do it, but uh, this one is one possibility. Uh, the RL2 and RL4 are, I think, very similar task, and they differ because one is uh, um, one is uh, uh, retrieved used query terms. And the R4 is retrieved um, using click terms, uh, sorry, click documents. And we, we use the same update function, and uh, uh, we use uh, snippets instead of queries. And the uh, background assumption there is that uh, uh, if a user clicks on in a document based on a snippet, it's almost equivalent as issuing the snippet as a query. Um, which uh, um, probably what I think is that uh, you should take that into account when you do the estimation uh, at the estimation stage. So, but again, this uh, the entire submission was based on the idea that we want to test the model and not how good we are in uh, in estimating probabilities. So, some results. Some results. Um, so we, our goal was to improve the uh, the last query subtopic. So the um, the relevance of the document or the document with re respect to the uh, subtopic of the last query, and so we did. Um, and as you can see, the influence of the prior is uh, uh, very low. So. Uh, using uh, or prior in this case is slightly worse than using just the last query. Um, so uh, having information from the narrative is uh, actually adds noise to the baseline, which is quite uh, um, an interesting uh, mm -hmm. finding, because actually we expected to 
uh, we almost think, well, maybe we are cheating a bit <coughs> by using the narrative, but actually from the 2011 uh, data appears that it makes things worse. Well, actually, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 very early on in Trek, uh, you know, uh, it, within the first five uh, years, uh, people noticed that using the narrative was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Like for ad hoc for people. Well, then it, uh, so it shouldn't surprise you. Thank you. Um, so we have some <coughs> additional findings. And uh, um, so remember that if we want to test how uh, our update strategy is working, <coughs> so um, we compare it with, uh, with the track medium. And uh, so we have basically three, w one prior and three different update strategies, uh, query, retrieval list, and, um, and click update. And uh, the, well, what is appeared is to be very difficult to, um, to compare the results uh, to other groups because our, um, our prior was quite high already. So, um, which is uh, uh, actually, as bad as being too low. <laughs> um, there, they have, so the, 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 the bottom line is you can't uh, really compare your results. <coughs> uh, if your prior, your baseline is not comparable. Um, and we see the influence of the hidden system. Uh, so uh, both result lists and clicks are actually mediated user interaction. So are user interactions that are um, that first have to pass through a system that we don't know anything about, and then bec become observable in in our model. And um, I think that uh, this is a sign that we um, the user interaction that are directly provided by the user are more valuable than uh, those that have to pass to the system, to tune on the system first. Uh, but the interesting point is also that there were, uh, our system performed a very, a very different performance within sessions. So, um, and we try to understand why. And so these are the last uh, two slides. Uh, we try to characterize sessions. I will not go into the details of this because I'm sure that this is something you know about more than I do. Um, and uh, the interesting part is here in the task type. So you see this system is uh, quite effective in the known subject. So the known subject has uh, a very the prior has very low performance, <coughs> but then it improves most in the update. So the update strategy is effective in this case. And uh, compared with interpretive uh, task type, where the update actually makes things worse. So, and obviously the next step is to adapt this event model to the test type, because if we know that we are that our user is engaging in interpretive task, we don't want to do anything about that. At least not with our system, or we have to change the parameters of the system to cope with that. Um, <coughs> so, uh, conclusions. Uh, Actually, back up. I want to say something yes? about this. Something that interesting came up at Trek, of course, is, is that uh, I spoke after Corrado did, okay, and in our uh, 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 our technique uh, in, uh, uh, worked very well for interpretive and exploratory, and did not uh, uh, work well. Did not increase performance significantly for known item or known subject. Okay, so uh, if uh, if there is a way <coughs> to think about okay, so this is so clearly the mm -hmm. two. Uh, I, we don't have a model mm -hmm. in the sense that you do, although we might. Can I jump in there? Yeah. So 
One thing that really strikes me about the whole approach is going back to context change potential. So sort of late 90s semantics work, so mm -hmm. Heim's work on uh, definiteness in changes in sentences in order to chop up and understand how dialogues were changing in common ground. And it seems to me here that uh, relevance is playing the same role as definiteness in that model, which would tie very nicely with language model and actually explain why the system that we were using, because we were predicting useful documents, mm -hmm. Mm. and you're not, ah. would in fact kick up, if you will, the specificity of the relevance, mm. which then allows to select between the different model spaces that you have, mm -hmm. run a mixture, and then you need to do an update on that. Very good. Yes. And if that's the case, uh, then that would, if one wanted to be really speculative, suggest that when people are doing interactive search, it really does have characteristics of dialogue as opposed to a simple search in information spaces. Yeah. Let yeah. me suggest that since you're going to be here this afternoon, that we can follow up on discussion about all of this stuff later and at, at, at lunch, okay? Yeah. Because we should get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I need to leave in probably. Huh? I need. I need to go in. Leave in twenty minutes. Oh, okay. Lost, uh, okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, the question is not only to you, but I guess also to mm -hmm. everybody else. So I. So one part is that in in your initial slide you show the system view and the omni instant view. And then in between, you have your model theoretic approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so is this in a sense that you suggest to use some specific theories that may be more informed by you know, human cognition, since the user now here is represented as a <coughs> set of cognitive states? Well, I think the bottom line is that this kind of models are there to allow us to uh, to compare different approaches. So, um, a cognitive theory, uh, as such, is applicable in IR only if you can generate a computational model from that. So, if it stays descriptive, then it's very difficult to to see what the influence will be for a ranking function. So, there are limits of what you can show analytically, but I think this approach is more powerful than uh, than other in, in doing that. Because I, I, I guess my thinking or my, my approach or my work is more in a sense of descriptive, mm -hmm. cognitive uh, approaches. So it's, and, and, and overall, I know, taking a, or maybe speaking more of a, you know, that is advocate is it still strikes me that this is more on a system end <coughs> than on a uh, on a user on a user uh, end yes this kind of uh, approaches and and so my, my and this is maybe more generally question to everybody is uh, how how could we bring more information about the user user's cognitive states or what other observables could be used in these models. Mm -hmm. I think that the model is general enough to accommodate a wide range of observables. Um, I think the, the what we uh, what we did uh, at Trek was to try to apply the model without the cognitive part, and I think the the uh, the model itself, in order to be applicable, has to come with some cognitive uh, part attached. And that's why I, I, I think, uh, um, um, well, Nick just gave a talk at track after I did. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of complementary because we had a theoretical approach mm -hmm. with very naive estimations. Mm -hmm. And Nick had just uh, a straightforward approach without uh, any <laughs> theoretical right. stuff attached, <laughs> right. but with very powerful uh, estimation strategy. Mm -hmm. 
So I think the, the only way to improve on the results is to combine the two. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so to have a way to, to discuss why a certain cognitive model is better than another one, mm -hmm. and to have a framework to compare the two. So um, this, this kind of models just provide a computational uh, framework. It's not more than that. So uh, you, you see, when when you uh, your estimation uh, uh, when your estimation strategy is not effective, then you get uh, bad results on some task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, second, we really don't know how to um, how to connect a certain estimation strategy with a certain task type. So a priori, before. Uh, Looking at the results, I I wouldn't dare to say which task are we actually supporting. So I don't have a strategy to set um, the the parameter of the system in order to support one particular task. But apparently, so that was the message of the track results. Uh, task is ex essential mm -hmm. to not well in this case to evaluate. Because uh, well, it was one of my conclusions, but yeah, I can yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you can see it here. Uh, if you look at this, the, the aggregate results, it's impossible to 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 make uh, uh, any point about that. What you can say about uh, the NDCG at ten between these different updated strategies? Mm -hmm. Well, they are almost the same. Yeah. So it's only when you look at uh, at at, uh, uh, at the task that you can actually evaluate your system. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's what the most interesting message. When, the, when I saw the first, uh, the first time I saw the, uh, the track results, I saw that they didn't uh, provide the, uh, the last query subtopic uh, uh, metric, which was all the system was built uh, uh, upon. So I said, well, we can't say anything about that. But if you look at the task, you still can, uh, can evaluate the system. And obviously, the the next uh, so well so the the conclusion on aggregate results is actually that you can't uh, say much if the baseline uh, is uh, appears to be higher than uh, what other group did. Um, and well, the task specific results is the inter interesting part. And so I also give some take home message, but this one was essentially meant for the track uh, uh, organizing for uh, next year. And so I think the most important for this, for today, is this, the future work. So um, the update strategy should be task dependent. And I think that that's the, um, the, the, the bottom line. So I, I give there, there is more in this model, so I try to keep it very, very general, without any. Uh, I, I just stripped all the maths out, but um, actually, the the bottom line is that uh, if you have uh, these update strategies, you can use it, but uh, they are just means to uh, to discuss uh, different approaches. So. Actually, what you what you want is every probability in that appears in the generalized conditioning step. You want to like let, let it explode in a submodel that models some cognitive uh, aspects. This is going on in of that we want to model in 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 our setting. So actually, the probabilities that appear in the model are not the input of the model, but the output of an underlying uh, cognitive submodel. And so there are more technical uh, uh, stuff there we are trying to do, but uh, we can discuss that offline. Yeah. OK. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.